39, another episode of Crossroad Circle Broadcasting. I guess this isn't our traditional episode. I'm going to start another series because pretty much every episode on this channel has been the start of a new series. I don't care. Uh, we're an organization built up of many artists, so there'll be some random things that pop up on here from time to time. But for me, I like to talk about religious things because since I was young, have been interested in looking into different um, religious texts and doctrines. That's kind of why I got into trouble with Jehovah's Witnesses, because I just asked too many questions, and I wanted to know more about the religion, yada yada, actually read the Bible, saw babies getting thrown against rocks and stuff like that, and I was like, Oh daughter Babylon, soon to be devastated. How blessed will be the one who repays you for what you dished out to us. How blessed will be the one who grabs your babies and smashes them on the rock. What? You got a really weak God. Really. And I was like, that's not chill. I'm not into that. Um, to be fair, I'm going to read uh, the entire verse from the Jehovah's Witness version of the Bible, the New World Translation, so you can see how they doctored it. That last video was actually from some nobody YouTuber. By the rivers of Babylon there we set, we wept when we remembered Zion. Upon the poplar trees in her midst we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for a song, those mocking us wanted amusement. Sing for us one of those songs of Zion. How can we sing the song of Jehovah on foreign soil? If I should forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand be forgetful. Let my tongue stick to my plate. If I do not remember you, if I do not place Jerusalem above my greatest reasons for rejoicing, remember, O Jehovah, what the Edomites said on the day Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, tear it down to its foundations. O daughter of Babylon, who is soon to be devastated, happy will be the one who rewards you with the treatment you inflicted on us. Happy will be the one who seizes your children and dashes them against the rocks. That's so nice of the organization, changing it from babies to children. So, I mean, that's not the point of this whole video. Um, so, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory to this book. It's called The Harp of God. For whatever reason, they wanted to bring up this 100-year-old book at the 2021 Annual Meeting of Jehovah's Witnesses. Odd. Imagine it's 1921. Uh, world War I just ended. The whole world's in shambles. Okay? The shit has hit the fan, so to say. And there's a bunch of maimed and crippled people everywhere and widows and all that. And, uh... A man comes around and he says, things are going to change from now on. Okay. He essentially said that all of those people would live to see the day that all of their ailments would be cured and there would be paradise on earth. With the obvious condition that you must join their religion. And the subtitle to this book is, Millions Now Living Will Never Die. This book was released 100 years ago. So definitely that's not an accurate statement. I um saw that they mentioned this book in one of their broadcastings recently, so I took it upon myself to find a copy, an extremely old copy of this extremely old book. This is The Harp of God. Proof conclusive that millions now living will never die. Um, I'm going to start this series. I mean, I'm going to read this book. That's what the that's what the series is. I'm reading this book. I noticed that nobody on YouTube has read an audiobook of this so far. So I'm going to read this book to you guys. This really, really boring book. Um, but for those of you who are Jehovah's Witnesses or ex-Jehovah's Witnesses who are interested in this text, I'm going to read it to you. And I'm going to upload it in different segments because I'm not going to read this whole thing in one sitting. That's ridiculous. I have a life. I have things that I got to do. I'm a baker and I edit videos and I have a few other projects to work on. Plus, I have a Digimon right now 
and a baby. Like that I mentioned the Digimon before the baby, I sound like a piece of Um, anyways, yeah, I have a life. So I can't do this all in one sitting, but I will read it to you. Oh, there's a preface. Well, I'll just let you guys... Okay. Here... a little piece of paper in here um by the way i I got this from a guy on um that i met on facebook in um in a jehovah's witness discussion group on facebook um i'll put like a little screenshot with a picture of him or like a message or something that have something having to do with him right here so you guys can see that all right um the lord's prayers in here so um yeah i don't really care about that i'm not gonna deal with that there's what looks like a little book marker. The Harp Bible Study Course. Hmm. All right. Um, yeah, but it was written by Rutherford. And in the book, Rutherford compares his 10 uh, fundamental, or he compares 10 fundamental doctrines to 10 strings of a harp first six strings of the harp are creation the adam and eve story justice including satan and mankind's fall abraham as the ancestor of jesus the birth of jesus the ransom and christ's resurrection um there are also claims of bible prophecy in here um there's the claim that a uh, job 38 35 and isaiah 68 uh, foretold wireless technology. The harp of God, proof conclusive that millions now living will never die. A textbook for Bible study, especially adapted for use of beginners with numerous questions and scripture citations. Let's see what's in here. Do 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 do. All right, there's a preface. Oh, actually, there's a dedication before a preface. And it says, uh, to the invisible king of glory now present. This is the dedication. Because in this universe, in this metaverse or whatever the hell you want to call it, in their world view, Jesus has come now in 1914. So, in the beginning of this book... It's saying, to the invisible king of glory now present, i.e. Jesus is now present, because he has chosen the organization at this point, and he's on earth, right? In the interest of the generation now on earth, who will become his loyal subjects, this book is dedicated. So that's the generation of millions of people who are going to uh, be alive when Armageddon comes. And in their world view when the world comes to an end, there's going to be a uh, paradise on earth and then, you know, a rapture. And but we'll get into that with this text because it changes um, throughout the years. And they're going to go into detail about all of that in a hundred years ago, 1921. Okay. So preface, there is a need of a textbook for beginners in Bible study. This book is intended to meet that long felt want. The subject matter is arranged progressively and orderly. A list of questions follows each point discussed, thus enabling the teacher to direct the mind of the student to the subject under consideration. So it has like a little study set up. There's questions after each thing, and then so they can direct the way you think. <clears throat> the numeral following each question refers to the paragraph of the text where the answer may be found, each paragraph being numbered to correspond. Jehovah had a great plan before the foundation of the world, but no one knew about it. During the first 4,000 years of man's history, God's plan was kept a secret. He began to reveal it to man nearly 1,900 years ago. And then to those who are consecrated to do his will, promise was made that greater light should come at the end of this age and the promise has been kept we are at that time 
So this is them essentially proclaiming that, um, you know, for like a thousand nine hundred years, there's been like uh, keepers of the new light who unveil the new light and they're unveiling it right now. And this is the peak of it a hundred years ago. Okay.